हेलो एवरीवन माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर मीनू एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर के आर मंगलम यूनिवर्सिटी इन दिस सेशन आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट डिफरेंट डेटा टाइप्स एंड ऑपरेटर्स अवेलेबल इन पाइथन वी हैव डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ डेटा टाइप्स अवेलेबल इन पाइथन लाइक नंबर्स नन सीक्वेंसेस सेट्स एंड मैपिंग्स अंडर नंबर्स वी हैव थ्री कैटेगरीज इंटीजर फ्लोटिंग पॉइंट नंबर and complex numbers number data types store the numerical values this data type is immutable that means once you have specified the value the value cannot be changed numbers is divided into three different categories integer and long integer stores the whole number float or floating point data type it stores the decimal values complex data type it stores the real and imaginary values then we have nun nun is a special data type it represent the absence of value in a variable and it is represented by the nun value then we have sequences under sequences we have three things strings lists and tuples a sequence is an ordered collection of items and indexed by positive integers it is a combination of both mutable and immutable data types mutable means mutable variable is one where you can change the values and immutable variables are the one where you cannot change the value of a particular variable so let us discuss about the list first list is a sequence of values of any type values in the list are called elements and they are mutable and indexed list is enclosed by the square brackets now let us see some examples of list how that how can we create the list and what are the different functionalities which are available with respect to the list this is the google google colab an online software for running the python programs we can use google colab as well apart from the interpreters which are available for python now here you can see in this statement that this is how we can create a list a is a name of the list variable is equal to this is the assignment operator then square bracket and then you can specify the number of items which are present in the list so print a here we are printing the val printing the list so this will give you the output once you'll click this run button you will see the output 10 20 30 and 40 this is what we have created a list items then i want to see what is the length of the print uh, then i want to see the length of the list length will give the number of elements present in the list len a so we have to simply press this run button this will give you the number of items present in the list that is 4 so 10 20 30 40 these are the items so length would be 4 now list is a variable where we can store integer string and floating data type it is a heterogeneous data type so here in list a this is another list which i am creating here the values of the list are 1 2 and this string value high and 1 is floating value then again i am printing the elements of the list using the print function print and the name of the list you have to provide here so this is the output which we will get now i want to append elements inside the list i have said that list is mutable mutable means we can add we can delete we can change the elements or the values in the list so append append is a function for you uh, for list a dot append in the brackets you can give the number of elements that you want to append in the list here i have given 40 so we will see here 
that 10, 20, 30, 40, this was the existing list and this 40 is added additionally by using the append function. Then we have a copy method. This copy method will copy the from one list variable to another list variable. The values of list A will be copied into the variable B which is of type list. So print B, here we are printing the values of the list. So with that you will get the output. Here we are printing the list values which are there in B. And then the another thing which we are doing here is we want to count, we want to use the count function. This count function will return the number of times a particular value appear in the list. For example, 10. So 10 is appearing only once, so it will give you the output 1. For example, here I give in place of 10, I have given 40. So this will return me the number of times the element 40 is appearing in the list. So it is giving 2. Now I have created another list, list 2. We have a extend function, extend function will combine the two lists together, one after the other. So here I have written the statement a dot extend in the brackets list 2. So elements of list 2 will be appended with the list a. So you can see here the output that elements of a comes first and then the elements of b. So these are the elements of b, you can clearly see the output. We have index function index function will return the index of first element with a specified value. For example, I want to see that in list A or in list A, I want to see what is the index of this particular element high. So when I will execute this command, it will print me 6. So that means the 6 appears at the 6th index in the list. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. The indexes in the list always starts with a 0. So you, if you want to print the index of any particular element in the list, you can do with the help of the index function. Then I have insert function. Using insert function, you can add the element into the list at any place. So insert function takes two parameter. First is, the, first is the index where you want to insert the value and second is the value which you want to add into the list. So in list A, I want to insert at second index, the value is orange. So if I run this, you will see that at second index, see this is first in 0, 1 and 2. This is the second index and we have inserted the value orange. Right, then we have a pop function in the list. In the pop function, what pop function does it does is it removes the elements at from the specified location. So the index you have to mention here that which, which particular element you want to pop out. So a dot pop one here I've given one. That means the value present at index one will be removed from the list. So here you can run the statement and you can see that 20 has been removed from the list A. We can also use the remove function for removing the element from the list. Here we have to specify the element name which we want to remove. In the pop function we were giving the index which we want to remove. So here we have done a dot remove and here I have specified the name of the list element which I want to remove. So print a here you will see that orange has also been removed from the list. Then we have reverse function. What reverse function will do? It will reverse the elements of the list. So this is the original list we have sorry after updation after removing orange this is the updated list we have now I want to reverse the elements of this particular list. So here you can see that 60 comes first then high 50 60 and so on. So with the reverse function you can simply reverse the elements of a list. 
then I want to apply sort function. Sort will sort the list elements in any particular order. So, we have to simply use the sort function b is the list and I have, uh, I have used sort function on list b, b dot sort. Then we are printing the elements. So, here you can see all the elements are sorted in the increasing order. We also have the max and min function which will tell us the maximum element and the minimum, minimum element in the list. This is how you can use it print max b the maximum out of the list b. So, you will get the output that 60.6 is the maximum element in the list. Then we have a min function which will show us the minimum value in the list. So, the minimum value is 10. So, min max will print the minimum and maximum value from the list. Now, we have the slicing form slicing. For example, I want to print more than one elements of a list for that I have to use slicing. So, for the slicing the, the syntax for the slicing is this list name we have to mention the initial value we have to mention the last value colon index jump. So, initial represent from where you want to print the value or where you want to process the value and specify the last value and jump specify how much jump you want to take. By default the jump is of single value, by default jump is 1. Now we will see some examples of list slicing here. For example, this is a list which I have created where we have certain elements in the list. Now I want to print all the elements from index 1 to 9. So, this 1 is the start value and this 9 is the end value. So, you will see that it will print the list from first index not from 0 because the list index starts from 0. Here we are printing from 1 to 9. So, 9 minus 1 the end element will take 1 value less whatever you specify. So, here it will print all the values from 1 to 9 minus 1 that is 8. So, 70, 30 up to 34 it will print the values in this particular range. Then here in this second, second example you can see that I have specified the start value, the end value and the jump of 2 that means now the jump has been specified that it will jump by plus 2. So, here you can see I want to print all the values from 1 to 10 with the difference 2. So, you can see that this first, first value has been printed 70, then the jump of 2, 70, 30, then 20 will be printed, then 90, 10 will be printed, then 50 left of 70 will be printed and so on. Now, slicing. In order to access a range of element in a list, you need to slice a list. Using the slicing, we can access more than one element at a time. For the slicing, we are using the colon operator. This is the syntax you can see here. LST is the name of the list, initial and index jump. Initial is the initial value, end is the last value and jump is the how much jump you want to in the list to access the element. So, by default the jump is of single value that is by default this value is 1. So, this is the list we have created of few elements. Now, I want to access the elements from 1 to 9. You can see here that from 70 to 34 these are the elements we are able to access. The list index always starts with a 0. For example, if I change the value from 1 to 4, you can see the change in the output that we are accessing the list starting from the index 4. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 starting from 90 to till the 8th value. So, the last value is where you can access the list is 9 minus 1 that means you can access the list from 1, 4 to 8 here. Another example of slicing is where you are accessing a list from 1 to 10 
with a jump of 2. Here you can see that we are getting the value 70. We are starting from this first element, then the 70 will be printed, then 20, then 10, then 70, then 45. So it is taking the jump of 2 at a time. Another syntax for slicing is when we leave colon dot colon without specifying any value. That means it will take the initial value 0 as the initial value and last value. The list will go from the 0 and the last value with a jump of 2. You will see the difference in the output that we will see here. Then if we specify, if we specify this list colon dot colon dot colon, that means it, it takes, it starts the list from 0 till end with a default jump of 1. That means it will print the entire list as you can see in the output till 50 to the last value. The slicing, in the slicing we can also use the negative indexes. So negative indexes means we are representing or we are accessing the last element from the list. So here in this example you can see print colon colon minus 2. That means we are accessing the entire list and we are taking a jump of minus 2. So if you want to start the indexes indexing from the last element we have to use the negative index. So you will see here that I want to access the last element first. So uh, you have to use the negative index. So as an, out, as an output you can see, uh, sorry, here we have a jump of minus 2. So you will see that we will start accessing the list from the last element till the first element with a jump of 245, then 70, then 10, then 20 then again 70 and so on. Minus 1 represents the jump of a single value and the list will be starting from the last. So in this example you can see we will start from the last, we will print the entire list starting from the last index. So negative index represents the last element of the list. We can also specify these two values. So this means uh, here we are not specifying the jump. That means we are starting from the start index till minus 1. So you can also use, you can also give these two options in the list. You can see the output the way it is printed. So again we are printing the entire list. Minus 1 represent the till the last index. So here the last index is 45 as you can see in the original list. S the value from the start till minus 2 will be printed minus 1 minus 1 that makes minus 2. So this will be minus 1 index minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 till minus n. So here in this last case we will print the list starting from the first index till minus 2. Now we will discuss about the tuples. Tuples are also the part of the sequences. Tuples are like list but they are immutable. They are stored in the functional bracket or the round brackets you can say. Tuple items are ordered unchangeable and allow duplicate values. Ordered means we have indexes in the tuple as well the way we have in the list. Unchangeable means the tuples are immutable. Once you have specified the tuple, you will not be able to change the values of the tuple and they allow the duplicate values. Tuples are a sequence of values of any type that means you can store any type of value in a tuple whether it is an integer, string or a floating type value. They are enclosed in the round brackets. We will see the example of the tuples and various functions associated with the tuples here. So this is how we have created a tuple. You can give any variable name 
here we have a tuple t is equal to in the round brackets you can specify the values and then we are printing the values of the tuple using print function print t t is a tuple so you can see the output here then we have another way of creating tuple using the tuple constructor here we have tup another tuple variable here i am using the constructor to create a tuple here we have to use double round brackets whenever we are using the tuple constructor you can give any value here we have given some integers and some decimal values see you can see the output of the tuple then i want to print the way we have the inbuilt functions associated with the list in the same way we have inbuilt functions associated with the tuples as well as with the strings so len tuple will give you the length of the tuple count tuple tuple dot count will give you the the number of times this value 22 occurred in the tuple if it is once it will give you one if it is twice it will give you twice so number of times this particular value appears in the tuple index index will give you the value at that particular sorry index will give us the index of a particular value in the tuple for example we have a tuple we have 45 here so i want to print the index of this so tuple dot index and put a print command here you will be able to print the index of this element then sorting a tuple using the sorted function we can sort the tuple we have to use this sorted function sorted in the brackets specify the tuple name and the values will be sorted as you can see as the output of this function again we can print max min values in the tuple max will give the maximum value and min will give the minimum value present in the tuple then we have a sum function this sum function is also there in the list which will give us the sum of all the values that are present in the tuple so sum give the tuple name it will add all the values of the tuple and will give the output tuples are immutable so we cannot remove the elements from the tuple so if you will apply the remove function here it will give the error as they are immutable then we can also apply slicing here in the tuple the way we have applied in the list to access more than one element at a time we can use slice function print tuple in the square brackets we have put blank colon blank so this means we will print the entire tuple from the start to the last again the indexes in the tuple always starts with the zero so tuple 2 colon 4 so this will print the second element and the third element of the tuple you can see here this is the original tuple and we are printing the tuple values from the second index till the third so that this last value is represented by this 4 minus 1 that means we can we can we can print here the second and the third value which are 0 1 2 second is 23 and third is 78 again the negative indexes we can use in the tuple negative indexes represents the last elements in the tuple so colon blank colon blank colon minus 1 so we will access the tuple starting from the last elements so this was original tuple if you can see and using the negative index we can start accessing from the last elements which is this 6.8978 till the first so it is basically reversing the tuple values then we have <coughs> then we have strings <coughs> string is an ordered sequence of letters or characters they are enclosed in either the double quotes or the single quotes the, these quotes only tell the computer from where the string starts or ends strings are immutable that means once you have specified the string you cannot change that value 
a string with length one represent a character in Python. So again, we have various functions associated with the strings as we can see here. We have so many functions available related to string. So how you will create the string variable? We have str, a string variable, assignment operator, and in the double quotes or in single quote, you specify the string. So string contains this value. I want to, I want to apply certain functionality on this string. So capitalize. We have capitalize inbuilt function. So this will capitalize the string. That means the first character of every word will be in capital letters. This is how using printx we can print the string. So once we'll execute these statements, you will be able to see the output hello, h is capital, comma, lx. Okay, so capitalize will always return the first character in the uppercase. So hello, in hello, h is converted into the capital case. Then we have count function. Count function again will tell the number of times a particular element that is occurred in the string. So here I have created a string txt. I love Python and Python is my favorite subject. So I want to see how many times Python appeared in the string. So using count function text.count print text, we are able to print the number of times a particular string occur in the string. A num so using the count function, we can see how many times a particular value is appearing in the string. Then we have find function. Using find function, we can see we can see whether that, that particular value is appearing in the string or not. And if it is there, it will revert with the index of that value. So here I want to find Python. I want to see where the Python is occurring in the list. So it will give the first occurrence of that value. So print x, it is giving you the first occurrence of Python. This seven is the index where this Python is occurring first time. So it is also including the white spaces. Then we have is alphanumeric. So is alphanumeric will return the true or false value whether the string you have passed is alphanumeric or not. So here I've written company 12. It will check the string whether it is alphanumeric or not and return the true or false value based on that. So in this case, it is a alphanumeric value. It is returning true. Is decimal. Is decimal will check whether it is a decimal or not. Whether the string is decimal in decimal values or not. So it will return false because this is not in decimal. Then we have is digit. Is digit will check whether the string you have passed, passed contains digits. So if it is the digits are there in the string, it will return true. Otherwise it, it will return false because we have both the characters and the digits in the list, in the string, sorry. Then we have split function. What split function will do, it will divide the string into different elements based on the white spaces and will store the string in the form of a list. As you can see, this is the string I have passed using text to split function. I have split the string right based on the white values and you can see as an output this is the output we have got i is one element love is one element then python python is my favorite language now these are the different elements and they have been stored in a list then we have strip function what strip function will do it will remove the white spaces from the left and the right of the list from the start and from the end of the list. So if you want to remove all the white spaces from beginning and from the end, you can use the strip function text.strip. So we have various other functions available in strings. You can explore more. Then after strings, we have sets. Sets is unordered collection of values of any type 
with no duplicate entry and it is immutable. That means like the way in mathematics we create the sets and we apply various functionality in the same way in Python we can create the sets and programmically we can apply various functionalities or various functions on the sets. We will see again here how the sets can be created in Python and what are the different built-in functionalities related to the sets available with us. So we can create empty set with this, with this set constructor set s1 is equal to set and round bracket here this this statement will create the empty set sets are always enclosed within the curly brackets so this is the second way of creating a set s2 is equal to in the curly brackets 1 3 and 5 these are the values of the set then we can also create a set either from the list or from the tuple or strings so here i am creating a set from the tuple now for example s1 is one set where which have values 1 2 and 4 now I, I want to add the values to the set set is an unmutable but we can always add the new values to the set so with add 6 i'm adding new element to the set and we can print the set using the print statement print s1 so you can see the 6 has been added to the set then i want to see the length function again in the same way the way we have done for strings list and tuples we can always see the length of the set using length function max and min will find out the maximum and minimum value of the set sum will print the sum of all the values in the sum and this is the membership operators in and not in using in operator we can check whether the element is present in the set or not so three in in is a keyword in s1 whether three is present in the set one or not so you can see we have one two and four elements in the set so it is it is giving false that three is not present in the set s1 dot remove we can also remove the elements from the set using the remove function remove 4 you specify the element which you want to remove so you can see that 4 has been removed from the set we have various uh, uh, operations available in python related to set like union intersection difference which we apply in mathematics so here we have created two sets a and b having having uh, some similar and some different values now we'll see the union function union function will return all the values which are there in in both the sets a and b so you can see here when we'll when we are doing the union of a and b it is taking all the values of a set a and of set b as well and this using this pipe we can represent the union function then we have intersection intersection will take insert intersection operator will be giving us the common values which are there in set a as well as in set b and it is represented by the symbol and so a and b this is the intersection of a and b and if i'll run these statements it will give the common values which are there four and five in a as well as in b then we have we can also represent intersection using the intersection function we can always use this also in place of and operator a dot intersection b so it will give you the intersection of set a and set b the next functionality we have set difference set difference if we say a minus b so a minus b is a set of elements that are only in a not in b so the elements which are there in a and not in b will be represented by a minus b so we have a and b if i do a minus b this will give the values of set a which are not there in b 
we can also represent this difference function using this difference operator a dot difference b a and b both are sets so we'll receive the same output then we have symmetric difference symmetric difference of a and b is a set of elements in a not in both oh, sorry symmetric difference of a and b is a set of elements in a but not in both so when we say this is represented by this cap symbol and when we say symmetric difference you can see a cap symbol b you will receive the symmetric difference the elements which are elements of a which are not there in b and the elements of b which are not there in a are all are all represented in the symmetric difference then we have membership operators in and not in so here we can see in this statement p in my set my set is an uh, set which contains a string python now i am going to check whether p is there in the set or not so that we can check using membership operator p in my set so it will return true or false whether it is present or not so depending upon that it will return the true or false value a not in my set so a is not in my set so that will represent true if i say p not in my set it will represent false you can see so these are the membership operators so we have discussed we have discussed about numbers integers floating point numbers complex numbers none we have discussed sequences strings tuples list we have discussed about sets and the last is dictionary dictionaries are stored dictionaries are used to store the values in key pairs so we can access the element of a dictionary using its key and they are enclosed in the curly brackets again we can see the functionality of the dictionaries here they are used to store the data values in key value pairs dictionaries is a collection which is ordered they are ordered you can access the dictionary with the indexes they are changeable you can add remove the elements from the dictionary and they do not allow duplicates even if you uh, if you'll put the uh, duplicate values in the dictionary it will give the error because we can't have the same key for the different values so let us see the different ways of creating the dictionary so this is dict this is a dictionary variable and in the curly brackets we have given two things keys and values so one this is a key colon lx the string always has to be put into the single or the double quote this is the first element of the dictionary then second is second key is two colon bob then third is three zen so we can print the dictionary using print function you can simply see how the output will appear 1 2 and 3 they are the keys and corresponding to these keys lx bob and zen these are the values okay it is not necessary that we always have these integer values as a key we can also have the string value or the character as a key as you can see in this second statement that here i have name colon geeks comma 1 again is the key colon and this list as a value of that index so we can print here name is geeks comma this is the first element of the dictionary and this is the second element of the dictionary one is the key and this list is a value now we'll see how to access the elements of a dictionary you can access the elements of the dictionary using keys so here i want to print name only or i want to print age so that you can do using different functionalities like my dictionary is the name of the dictionary and 
in the square brackets you give the key. So it will return the value corresponding to this key from the dictionary. The another function is the get function with which you can retrieve the value for that particular for any for any item. So here my dictionary dot get here we have used get functionality age. So I want to get the value of the age and address. I have also given the key which does not exist in the dictionary. So see let us see what will be the output. In this case it is returning for the first print statement name it is represent returning Jack for age it is returning 26 and for address which is not there in the the key which is not present in the dictionary it will return the error and it will give the none value that it has not been specified in the dictionary. Again we will see how we can how we can modify the the dictionary items. <clears throat> now let us see that we have this dictionary created name and age keys. Now I want to change the value of the age. So how do I modify the dictionary? You put the dictionary name, key name is equal to assign the value. So this will modify the values in the dictionary and we are printing the new dictionary here. You can see this 25 uh, in place of 21 we have the modified value 27. Now I want to add one more elements to the dictionary that we can do. You simply just write the key my dictionary specify the the new key here the new key is address here and specify its value and you can print the dictionary using print you will see now I have three elements in the dictionary name age and address. We can also remove the elements from the from the dictionary using the pop function or remove function. Now let us see both the functions this we have squares we have a you know a dictionary created here now I want to pop out 4 I can pop out 4 is the key that in the pop function you have to specify the key which you want to pop out now you will see here in the output the output is here the 16 has been removed you can see now let us execute this particular set of codes now you will see that here 4 has been removed this value has been removed now I want to use pop item function pop item function will always remove the last value or last item present in the dictionary as you can see here this 525 5 is a key and 25 is the value it has been removed in this statement clear function clear function will remove all the items from the dictionary so you will see here a set of blank dictionary so nothing is there in this dictionary now we have some other functions also like using item function item function will return all the key and value pair of the dictionary so marks is the name of the dictionary marks dot items we have removed we have sorry we have we have printed here the entire dictionary with key and value pair as you can see here in the output using the keys function marks dot keys this will return only the keys of the dictionary like physics and maths it has returned if I say marks dot values it will return all the values corresponding to all the keys like 67 87 and so on pop item pop item will return the last element present in the dictionary so these were some of the inbuilt functions which were available which are available corresponding to the dictionary so that's it in today's lecture thank you so much